Okay, uh, this is going to be a supplemental lesson. Um, I'm pretty sure that you this will not be on the end of course test this year, but I do think it's an important lesson for you all. And in fact, in uh, future uh, years in algebra come in the next couple of years, they're going to be doing this lesson uh, every year in class. So uh, it's worth learning now, and it's a pretty easy lesson. All right, uh, we're going to learn about perpendicular and parallel lines, okay? And let's talk about what a perpendicular is first. If I have a line, and let's say I make this line right here, the perpendicular of that line is a line that crosses it at a right angle. So there's a right angle here. That's what a perpendicular is. And then obviously a parallel line is two lines that never cross, okay? Now we're going to spend some time on the slope of a perpendicular line, but the parallel lines, the key concept I want you to understand here is this. If two lines are parallel, then their slopes are the same. Their slopes are equal. So if this had a slope of 2, this would have a slope of 2. That's what parallel lines mean. They never cross. Why don't they cross? Because they're tilted exactly the same. Now, perpendicular is a little bit more work, but par parallel is pretty easy. Okay? So let's, uh, let's deal with the uh, perpendicular for a few minutes here. All right. So if I have a line, and let's say the slope of that line is 2, to find the perpendicular of that slope, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that slope, and if it was a fraction, it would be 2 over 1. I'm going to take that slope, I'm going to flip it upside down so it becomes 1 over 2, and I'm going to negatize it so it becomes negative 1 over 2. So the slope of the line that's perpendicular to this is negative 1 half. Now you may be thinking, how is the slope of 2 and a slope of negative 1 half make a perpendicular? I'm not going to get into that right now, but um, I can give you an example of one real quick. If I had a slope of 2, that would let's say it goes through both of them go through origin, okay? So if I had a slope of 2, it would go up 1, 2, right? And then over 1. Up two over one. Okay, so this first graph would look something like this. All right. So let's say the other graph. We just said that the other slope was negative one half. With let's say it goes through origin, so it goes down one, right two. Yeah. Or yeah. up two, left one. Yeah. So it's there, right? up to left one, so it's there. And then what I say, down two, uh, I'm sorry, down one, right two, so up one, left two, sorry, it's, so it's here, yeah? All right, so there's my graph. Now it was a little bit confusing, but if I was to graph those points, you would see that those two graphs cross each other at a perfect right angle. And that's the whole point of this. I know it doesn't, it seems a little bit counterintuitive that that would actually do that, but it actually does. All right. When you graph those two lines, they're going to cross each other at a perfect right angle. So let's dumb this down for a minute. If I know the slope of the first line, and I do, the slope was 2, that becomes 2 over 1, right? Because that's a fraction. I flip it upside down, so 2 over 1 becomes 1 over 2, and I negatize it. So the slope of a perpendicular is negative 1 half. So let's do another example. What am I going to do here? Take that fraction, flip it upside down and negatize it. So the slope of this line is negative 2. Let's try the next one. Flip it upside down, 2 over 3. Negatize it. It is already negative, so when you negatize it, it becomes positive. So the slope of this line is 2 thirds. Let's see another example. If I had a slope of negative 3, it would become negative 3 over 1. I would flip it, and it would become 1 over 3. And it was negative, so when I negatize it, it becomes positive one-third. All right? And that's really the only new stuff here. The rest is stuff that we've already done before, okay? Okay, so here's the deal. Which graphs are parallel and which ones are perpendicular? Now, you could graph these on a calculator and, and pretty, figure it out pretty quickly. But what I want you to do on this lesson tonight is I want you to get them all in y equals mx plus b form, Okay? So this one is already in y equals mx plus b, so I'm going to go over here and just write it. So y equals 5x minus 3, right? 
Then I'm going to do the second one. So let's get that in y equals form. Right? Bring the x um, add a negative x to both sides, and I get 5y equals negative x. Divide everything by 5. I get y equals. There's a 1 there, so don't forget that. So negative 1 divided by 5 is negative 1 fifth x plus 2 fifths. So my second one is y equals negative 1 fifth x plus 2 fifths. And my third one, um, I'm going to go ahead and do this one here. I'm going to add 2x to both sides. Right, and I get uh, negative 10y equals 2x. Then I'm going to divide by a negative 10. And I picked this uh, this one on purpose because I wanted to see if you could recognize it. Uh, do you recognize what this equation really is? Well, I get y equals 2 divided by negative 10 is negative 1 fifth x. And if you remember the lesson from about, oh, I don't know, three weeks ago, this is actually a direct variation because it goes through origin. So my third equation is y equals negative one-fifth x. Okay? So let's find out which ones are parallel. So letter A, parallel. Now remember what I said about parallel. If two lines are parallel, they have the same slope. Well, if I look at this one, the slope of this one is negative one-fifth. The slope of this one is negative one-fifth. So which two are parallel? Well, the second and the third one, so B and C, because they have the exact same slope. To find out which two are perpendicular, all I'm going to do is look at these. Are these slopes perpendicular to each other? Well, if you go back to the thing we did a few minutes ago, let's look at 5. I'm going to do it off to the side here. If I take 5, it's 5 over 1. If I flip it, it becomes 1 over 5. And if I negatize it, it becomes negative 1 fifth. So which ones are perpendicular? Well, if since these are perpendiculars of each other, because that's the negative 1 fifth, when I flipped it and negatized it, I got this, which is what those slopes are. Which ones are perpendicular? Well, A and B, or A and C. Okay? So that's real easy. All you have to do is get them in Y equals MX plus B, look at their slopes, and figure out which ones are the same and which ones are flipped and negatized of each other. Okay? Now on to the little bit harder part. In example six, it says, run an equation of a line that passes through negative three, negative five, that is parallel, and uh, that is, we're going to do parallel, and then we're going to do perpendicular to y equals three x minus one. Okay? All right, so let's do parallel first. Remember, if the lines are parallel, then their slopes are the same right? Well, the slope of this line is 3, so the slope of a line parallel to it is 3. Now, we know the slope of this new line is 3, and we also know that this point, this is our x1, y1, is a point on the line. So what can I do then? Well, I can put that into the point-slope formula. Okay, let me walk you through that again. These lines are parallel. I want to draw, make an equation of a line that's parallel to this, so it has to have the same slope. And it needs to go through this point. So all I do is fill in the blanks now. Y minus a negative 5, which is plus 5. Plus equals 3 times x minus a negative 3 is plus 3. Right? Distribute the 3. I get 3x plus 9 equals uh, y plus 5. So add a negative 5 to both sides. And I'm left with y equals 3x plus 4. 
Okay, now what does that mean? That's my answer. If I were to graph this equation right here, and I was to graph this equation right here, these two lines would be parallel because they have the exact same slope. And, even more important, this graph goes through that point. So it answers that entire question. All right? Now, to find out which the perpendicular of this, what I need to do is this. Remember, I know that the original slope of the original equation was 3. So if I want to do the perpendicular of it, what do I do? Well, I flip it upside down, it becomes one-third, and I negatize it. So it becomes negative one-third. So then all I have to do is do the exact same thing I just did here. The only difference is, instead of this being a three, it's going to be a negative one-third. So let's just do that. So I get y plus five is equal to negative one-third of x uh, plus 3. All right? Distribute to negative 1 third, I get uh, negative 1 third x. Negative 1 third of 3 is negative 1 plus 5. Add a negative 5 to both sides. And I end up with y equaling negative 1 third x minus minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6. Okay, what does that mean? If I was to graph this equation, and then I was to graph this equation, these two graphs would cross each other at a perfect right angle. So they would make a, a right angle with each other. Okay? And this graph would go through this point right here. Okay? So let's do one more example. In actuality, actually, we're not going to do that at last example because I ended up doing both here. Okay? So the 3x minus 1, there's the parallel, there's the perpendicular. All right? So we're actually not going to do example 7. You can uh, scratch that one out on your paper. Put a big OX there. And let's get rid of it. All right? So let me summarize real fast. To find a line that is parallel to another line, you need to use the exact same slope. To find a line that's perpendicular to another line, you need to flip it upside down and negatize it, okay? And then once you do that, use that slope and with whichever point they give you and use the point-slope formula, okay? And there you have it. Good luck with this.